Welcome to this week's Screw the Cubicle TV episode, where we're going to be diving deep into how you can use the power of video to grow your brand, attract your ideal clients, and build an effective know, like, and trust factor with your audience. Now, for those of you who may be new here, I'm Lydia Lee. I'm a work reinvention coach and a small business strategist at Screw the Cubicle, and my mission is to help you to get your great work out in the world and build a business that's designed from your genius zone, which are your strengths, your values, and your personal personality. Now, video has been instrumental in helping me grow my business, and I've done this with creating content on my YouTube channel, uh, live streaming, and things like these video interviews today that have been my favorite marketing activity. And it's helped my clients to be educated and warmed up to my work, learn more about what I do, and it's such an excellent way to connect humanly with my audience. But I also know that it can be daunting to start being on video. It can feel awkward speaking to a camera, uh, feeling overwhelmed, what tools should I be using, and not knowing what kind of content is most effective to produce. So today we're gonna teach you how to show up authentically like yourself on camera, easy tools and equipment you can start using, give you ideas on the type of content that's ideal to produce with video, and how to use video marketing effectively to grow your audience. And I won't be doing this alone. Joining me today is Catalina Reeb, a coaching client who's worked with me in the past to build her business, and she is an expert focusing on creating effective and simple video marketing for business. Welcome to the show, Catalina. Hey, Lydia. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so glad I get a bit of your time. I know you're a busy mom, and it's not easy sometimes going through the pandemic in the world that we're experiencing today and trying to work. So thank you for taking the time to give us this fabulous uh, training today. Well, thank you for having me. This is actually really fun. I love uh, talking to interesting and amazing business owners like you. So thank you. So l before we get started on the core stuff you're going to teach us today, uh, why don't you tell us a bit about the clients you work with and the core work that you do with them? Yeah, so uh, I mainly work with uh, small business owners that are trying to uh, grow their business. So people that have been in business for a while and they are not at, at a point where are they kind of grow up their startup phase and they're looking for opportunities to grow their community, to grow um, their brand awareness, to also look for different ways to nurture their leads. Um, the clients that I usually work with are um, entrepreneurs that uh, either work, uh, mostly work with services and they're looking to just, uh, a lot of them actually looking for to make an, a huge impact in the world. So I, uh, through, and I, I helped them that, do that through their message. So it's actually a very fascinating work because I seen uh, the work that I do is helping also people that are afraid of the camera to be now in front of the camera and also help them. Okay. Now, like you were saying, like what to say, how to say it, or how do I use it for my business? So that's kind of what I, I come in and I help my clients and like, uh, be more comfortable in camera because now like for example with this whole pandemic you realize like how important now businesses are to uh, have to be migrated into video but now even when everything is going to reopen a lot of businesses are going to keep doing this so businesses really need to be in video now and that's when i come in and help them actually overcome their fears but also now doing it strategically in a way that works for their business Love that. And I think I wish I knew you back in the day <laughs> before I started my YouTube channel and struggling with it. So I think this is going to be an amazing training for up and coming people that are wanting to do video, but also existing business using video uh, or businesses using video, but aren't getting that traction that they need with their videos. So um, can't wait to dive into this with you. So Catalina, would you like to share your screen and begin the presentation and we'll get started? Uh, yeah, for sure, Lydia. So uh, what I uh, wanted to actually kind of uh, come and explain and share with people is why start with video? I mean, video, it is actually something that is quite scare, uh, scary for a lot of people, mostly with people like, for example, for different generation that we didn't really grow up with cameras and posting every single thing that we do on, on our lives on social media. So, and now suddenly we have to be in camera and then also the camera and the video that, and the, the idea that we grew up about um, videos or screens was actually Hollywood and TV. And so a lot of us had the idea that everything had to be perfect. And, um, but anyways, I'm actually going to go into that more detail later. So why start with video for your business? Um, 
The first thing that I always tell my clients is, um, I actually specialize mostly in video for YouTube, and uh, is that you have to remember that video has to be a strategic for your business. What does that mean? You wanna make sure uh, the video is actually contributing to all parts of your funnel. So for example, um, it was gonna help you get brand awareness, so people have never uh, heard about you and they just wanna kinda get to know you a little bit better, then that's great, then in the next level for example they kind of know you but they don't know who you are the one I just kind of hear a little bit more about you so you're actually nurturing those leads then hopefully you get those leads into your email list then you also help you close uh, sales just a fun a fun story I had one of my clients that came one day he's like hey you know I actually closed this guy who uh, I he's been watching my stuff and then went and watched a YouTube video and after he's on my video he's like okay let's do it. Um, and it and he has actually been following him for a while so I've heard a lot of those stories so that that's what it helps close leads but also uh, and I think Lydia maybe for you you've seen this it creates a lot of loyalty for with your audience so clients like that people have been clients of yours and then I've been a client of yours and I love you and I love to spread out your word and it's easier for me for example now it's like hey go and check Lydia this is our YouTube channel, she's amazing. So you also create that, create that loyalty and then referrals that it just like more organically happen. Um, so yeah, so that's amazing for video. And like I said, build closer relationship with leads and clients. Um, there's one thing about uh, video and it's like you as humans, we're wired, we're very visual. A being so it's good to, for you to see my mannerisms how I talk who I, who I am you need my clothes and not for, as a judgy way but more about oh you know I really like this person and I would like to know and connect more with that so video is really good at at that um, do you have any thoughts about that? Lydia? Yeah, I mean, I was just gonna say that like video, I think as, especially cause if, if you're a service-based professional where people are hiring, not just you as a business owner, but you as a person, right? That really matters, I think, in, in conveying who you are and your strengths and your approach. It's really hard to sometimes find that out from just reading your about page. So when people can see you, they can hear you, uh, it's a very great storytelling tool. I think that connection, as you said, with brand loyalty and even brand brand awareness, uh, video has uh, really been an amazing tool for me to, to get there. Yeah, and, and also, um, I, I think I want to go back to the point where I was starting my business, and I think you and I worked a lot about this, is like, why would people buy from me? There are so many people offering these services. Well, I think you told me this, it's like, people don't buy the service, they buy you. Mm -hmm. So this is a way of you showing you and that, and you don't have to be, and then, you know, I'll, I'll touch on this. Um, you don't have to create this persona who you're not, um, exactly. I'll touch more at, at the end, but, uh, anyway, so definitely for the connection, the human interaction and being able to spread the word internationally. Cause I think, mm. I mean, maybe you are in, in, in Bali and a lot of your clients are in here in North America. Um, but a lot of this, because you, you do video, right. And that's just, otherwise you would be stuck on one region. So I think totally. video is amazing. Yeah. Um, so what's happening in the market? And I think this is more for those um, people that are more like data numbers oriented. So, um, so there's a lot of studies that show that uh, consumers want to see more video. This was in 2018, so it's already been a couple of years, but imagine people are actually expecting video from brands now. This is just, it's just a fact. The average user spends about 88% more time on a website with video. This is something else, another thing that you can do with your videos as well, and I'm gonna be touching that later, and is that with websites, you can actually put videos saying thank you, and then it just adds a personalized, um, little touch to your website, which helps with retentions. Uh, also, a lot of consumer, uh, the favorite type of content they see on brand and social medias are videos. And uh, I mean, this is a different thing, but just an example, see how TikTok took off. I mean, that's a different, different demographic, you know, it's quite young, but you'll see how video right now is really kind of coming up as a very essential uh, for kind of our lives. And, uh, you know, eight out of, 10 users have purchased a software and app after they, buy, they have watched a video brand. So imagine, this is what I was talking to you about uh, being part of your funnel. It's, uh, it's contributed a lot um, in a lot of places. And here's one thing that I wanna, and I'm probably gonna emphasize many, many times, when you're making video, don't obsess too much about 
the amount of viewers that you have, you have to obsess about how the how video is contributing to your brand awareness, to closing leads, to you know all these things that I mentioned before, because that's what you want to use. If you want to be a YouTuber and make money with YouTube, then you want to obsess about the number. You want to obsess about quality of views. Oh, Anyways, can I just jump in here and just please, say, please. I'm so yes. glad you said that because <laughs> so many people when they're starting video or just a business in general, there's so much focus on these met, these vanity metrics, right? And you're so yes. right when you're dealing with a human based business, right? Human to human cons consultants, freelancers, coaches, nutritionists, whoever you are, that's in a service based business is not the quantity of your fans that matter, but the quality right, of your audience. Uh, and you don't need as many. You need people that are warmed up. You need people that are ready and, and, and love what you have. You're not trying to be famous, internet famous, right? You're trying to really have warm leads uh, and, and consistent content that I think uh, helps, as you say, bring, brings in the, those loyal people watching you every single week. And, and I always say this, and I heard this from someone else, I don't remember who, but I, it will always stuck in my head is if it's 50 people, let's say you'll get 50 views. So sometimes people are like, oh my God, I only have 50 views. But just think about this, 50 views are 50 people. Imagine if you're in a room and that you have a room of 50 people watching you what you're saying. That is actually a pretty big deal, you know? Totally. Yeah. I'd have you to have reframe to that. I'm so glad you yes. said it. Yes, because we're so obsessed with numbers, like in, in terms of social media, like that, that's kind of like, oh, you know, you have to have all these views and the likes and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, it's, you have to totally change your, your, your yeah, your frame of mind. So there. Um, so yeah, so, and why does video actually work? Because that's the thing, like, you say like, oh yeah, of course, Catalina is a video person. Of course, she's going to sell me video. But anyway, so here's for those uh, that still need some more data. Um, so 85% um, of business owners say the video has helped them increase traffic. They also help them generate leads. And then people actually say, like people that are using video on, on website, they say the retention of people on websites are the most important as 80% of business owner of this kind of study. And also 41% um, of business owners say that video has helped them reduce support calls. And that is um, one of, for example, strategies. And one of the things that we start with my clients is doing Q and A videos, because that is better than just send them an article. It's better if you explain to them, okay, this is what is a common question and this is how you solve it. And, and somehow, because you have that person talking to you, it makes it a little bit more um, like, um, yeah, like a more uh, personalized. Yes. And um, yeah, it just gives you more uh, qualified leads. Um, I, uh, I, I, once again, contribute, and I'm going to repeat this over and over because I want you to the really stick that into your head, is like contributes to every single step in your sales funnel. And people who are using it said 100% that, well, 84, 81, 80% <laughs> said it does, right? Um, yeah, well, how, what was been your experience, uh, Lydia? Yeah, I use video a lot, obviously, as a lead generation tool for people who don't uh, have some interest in my work, but don't really know how I help and a great way to introduce them to my philosophies, my concepts, right, my approach to the work I do uh, has been amazing uh, to do via video. And it's also a resource, right? It's a I almost look at my YouTube channel as a library of my teachings and my resources that are categorized, uh, you know, well, and whenever someone has a question, but they're not ready to start coaching right away that's the resource I send them to, you mm -hmm. know, it's almost like they're getting a mini coaching session from me, right? But it's no, no skin off my back because I've recorded that video. It's an asset and a resource for me. Uh, and then I use video a lot when I onboard clients as well. That makes it really easy for me to welcome them to a new program, show them how to find things, get them prepared before they start working with me. So video has been uh, such a, a great tool to use in every step, as you say, of the customer journey. And I think people mm -hmm. really appreciate uh, that human touch, you know, and that that extra personalization and intimacy that I think video does an excellent job uh, to provide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so big big fan too, of course. Um, so why get into video marketing? And I guess this is you and I have been answering this question. Well, your audience is asking for it. People are asking, and they expect you as a brand to have one. Um, the online world is moving towards consuming even more video. Like I said, I know TikTok is for a different audience, but it is actually 
that is an example of what's kind of going crazy the world around. And your competitors are either there or they will be there soon. So there's a lot of people now running into video marketing and, uh, and this is a good time to do it. You have to do it. It's one of those things that's like, if you want to grow your business and grow your communities, that's what they're going to do. Um, so one thing that I wanted to talk about here, and I think this is and why I wanted to put it here is because a lot of people think about video for millennials, younger people, 19, 20, and it's like for some business owners, that's their target audience, but some small other business owners, no, my target audience are 35 year olds or generation X or baby boomers. Well, According to Google, actually, uh, for example, the Generation X, which is around 39 to 53 year olds, around, they watch about 1.5 billion YouTube videos per day. And Baby Boomer, so 50 to 65, um, actually, the Generation X is the fastest growing demographic in YouTube. So uh, if your business, pretty much, if you're targeting any, any kind of demographics, you want to be there because your audience is there. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, so it, that's actually very interesting. And of course, if you're targeting millennials, it's a no-brainer. You gotta be there. This the millennials, I think they've been they, they binge watch um, YouTube and they prefer YouTube over any forms of TV, except Netflix probably. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you know what I mean. Yes. Um. So I okay, and, and and this is what kind of videos can you make? Because I think. I, I find a lot of my, that my clients, when it comes to me, it's like, yeah, that sounds all great and everything, but what do I do? What do I say in front of the camera? That's just so overwhelming. But then it's like, okay, let's just break into what kind of videos exist and, and what makes sense for, you, for your business because not all videos make sense for your business. So you have demo videos, for example. So if you want to demo any of your product, you have a product or a service, a brand videos, decent mostly, I've seen it, I mean, you can do it as a small business, but I see it mostly for bigger corporations or if you're a medium size, you know, but you can do it as a small too, but you know, like mission, vision, kind of trying to explain people who you are, like um, event videos. I think, I, I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of videos where people, companies go their, around their videos, they interview people, the back of the, of the event and all the stuff and they, they put those videos expert interviews is kind of like what Lydia and I are doing and that's a great way of generating content education on how to's which is usually what people think about when if they think about videos it's like I'm just gonna explain something gonna teach something but some uh, uh, some markets are not really done for that but that's so don't don't get to um, upset that that's the only thing that you can do explain our videos it's kind of like the difference with the demo is like how do your service and product um, solve the problem that they have. So you explain to them the transformation. At the end of the day, people buy transformations. They don't buy services. They buy what they can do from them. So here's a good one. Case studies and testimonials, um, live videos. Live videos are, are super, super powerful. It's interesting how I've seen this trend in the last probably year is like more people are engaged with live videos. And I, 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 Lydia, you do a lot of live. And how do, what, what, what are you experience with this ones? Yeah, I, I love live videos because partly because I hate editing. <laughs> And you know me, I, I, I don't like to do more work than You're I need fine. to do. Right. Yeah. So live videos kind of mix. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So this is the thing, right? This live videos allows me to just go on, say what I need to say, be who I am and not, not be too per perfect about editing mm -hmm. and, you know, making it polished. And I think live videos, uh, again, going back to the human touch, like people do yeah. like to, um, you know, hear from you in a very casual sort of impromptu way. It doesn't feel so overly produced and it just mm -hmm. gives it that kind of um, human element again that I think people are really attracted to these days. They don't want to learn from a guru in a studio somewhere with lights, camera, action, you know, going on with five assistants in the background. They want to mm -hmm. see that you're a real person. You kind of sometimes have a dog running in and your kids yelling at the background sometimes and it's just life. And I think I that, that again, right, allows you to, um, Re connect and resonate with your audience a bit more. But yeah, lives, I, I've, what I've seen in the statistics, I do a lot of live videos on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've seen that is it's like double, if not like 
probably at some videos quadrupled the views because for some reason, Facebook kind of prefers that and it likes that you are doing live video on that platform. Uh, and people are just tuning in whenever they can. And then the, the, the recorded version of it is available all the time. You don't have to worry about uploading it onto another platform. And so uh, live videos have been one of my, like I do core videos on my YouTube channel once a week. And then I do kind of short explainer videos or even promote the video I did on YouTube on Facebook with live streaming. Hmm, that's, that actually, that's a really good, that's a really, really good strategy. And as I say, and, and also it's not about just YouTube. Of course, I work mainly with YouTube, but Facebook videos are super, I mean, they're super powerful as well. Um, Instagram, and I'll get to that one. I mean, it's more recording, uh, but um, story videos. I don't know if you use those ones, but those are actually a great way to even test to uh, story videos that YouTube has it, Facebook has it, and um, uh, Instagram as well. And then the nice thing is that, for example, for Instagram, they only last, it's only 15 minutes, sorry, 15 seconds, and after 24 hours, they disappear. So one thing, for example, that is a great way to, for you to be authentic and create that content. You know, that is more personal of what, like, what's happening with you and doing a little bit tips on your business. But if you're just learning, you're starting with video, is a great way to, to uh, practice. And if you don't like it, doesn't matter because it's going to disappear anyways in 24 hours. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. Right. So you just like, just do it. And then just get in yourself in the, in the, in the habit of being in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, great point. But, uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's good. Um, so, and in here, um, and, if, and he, you and I have touched a lot on this, about this point is how to show up authentically in front of the camera, which is so important because a lot of people think about, I need to be this persona when I have to do my perfect hair and makeup or this, the light or, you know, all these things. First of all, you need to be yourself. The perfect look is only for actresses in Hollywood. I always said that. Uh, forget about what you see on TV or, or these people on the red carpet. That's not you. And this is completely different. This is video marketing. People like real stuff, you know. Um, so just be you. One thing that is super important, sorry about that, kids. Is that your uh, kids running in the background? See, there's real. Yeah. Real and raw right there. <laughs> this is the real life, yes. <laughs> I have a wooden floor, so anyway. So change your mindset. Mindset is so huge. And this is the first, when I work with my clients, um, that's the first thing that we do. And is that um, it's not about you being perfect. People are not going to criticize you. For example, you, 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 you like, the, like this, uh, uh, you forgot something. That's okay. Some, you had to stop for a minute because, you know, someone came. That's okay. Of course, if you want to reduce the amount of interruptions you have, but if they happen, it's not a big deal. And you are perfect the way you are. And why say that? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I want to lose some pounds before I go into video. I want to do, I don't know, like my hair or I want to, and it was, that's all excuses and it's just never going to happen. So change your mindset. It's not about being perfect. It's about being you. And the more authentic, the more people will connect with you and they will buy from you. Because like I said at the beginning, people don't buy services they buy transformation but they also buy you so you want to show that and uh and you're you're enough you're good enough that you are enough the way that you are um so that's that's something that I always keep in mind and um practice makes the master you there's no shortcuts you just gotta go and do it and get over it you know, over and over it and you'll get it done um because some people people tell me oh well i don't know like i did a couple of videos they look so bad and you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. The first couple are going to look really bad and that's okay because then you're going to be practicing and then you're going to become better. And then you're going to know that the camera is your friend. Believe me, I've seen all my clients that going through the transformation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So how, so how was it for you? I, I, I feel that you're more like camera is uh, being your, your friend for, for a while. <laughs> Well, people should see my first YouTube video. It was I think, atrocious. <laughs> I mean, it, it took me forever to film it. And then the funny story is I got into an, a scooter accident before I oh. could film it because it took me 20 times to work out the courage to, you know, script myself and do all the stuff. And then I got into an accident anyway. 
<laughs> and I couldn't do it perfectly. And then that became the video. It's like, you know what? You got to overcome your perfectionism because you never know when you have to do it. But uh, I liked the, the concept of done is better than perfect, you know? Yes. Uh, and what that means is like sometimes showing up and just doing a video to your best of your ability and you do it again and again, as you said, that incremental effort is going to help you to master like anything that we're trying to learn, it takes time, it takes mm -hmm. commitment and consistency. And before you know it, you're going to be able to find your style, find your voice and find your approach because you shouldn't show up on camera being like anyone else, as you said, mm -hmm. uh, it should really come from the way you like to speak and so forth. So now it, it, I barely have to think about what I need to do. I barely script anything. You know, I might give myself some points like a, on a sticky note, you know, sometimes on my page or something like that. But other than that, I think that free flow, how, how, how you would say things conversationally uh, is probably one of the most effective ways to communicate via video. And, uh, and I agree with you, I've seen that. Um, and, and I find that in terms of the transformation, I, I usually start my clients with scripts just to get them cut because sometimes you're like, I don't know what to say, but I'm like, okay, let's memorize that. And then you'll, let's film it with a script. That's now like, let go of the script. Now let's film it like you're just talking to me as your client and you're just, mm. and when you compare the two videos, it's amazing. It's like when the screen, you start tensing, like you like everything is like, you know, and as humans, we're wired to now, like we're like, what's happening with that person? You know, why <laughs> they're so stressed out. As if I'm just talking to you and I know I have to t give you three points, then that's it. But anyways, that's, it comes with practice. Yeah, it's all totally. Practice. That's not, then uh, yeah, my first video was really funny. I remember I was with my sister and she, I got super stressed out. It took me like two weeks and I was like, okay, we finally put all these, like we set up all these things and lights and camera. And then my mom, my sister filmed me. And then I remember I said, she stopped and was like, how did I do? And she's like, well, well, you might want to do that again. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but I put so much effort. And she's like, yeah, but it's like a little bit too robotic and we have to do it like a million times. And until we finally did it and now it's just like, uh. but anyways, practice, 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 practice. Um, and, uh, and here is actually a question, and I think you mentioned this at the beginning of our, our chat, is like how to make easy the video recording? Because a lot of people is like, oh my God, do I need to get this camera? That's a lot of questions I get to. Should I buy light? What kind of microphone should I get? Like, should I rent a, a, like a like space? And really the best way to do is to start with, like filming with your phone or your computer. Um, the, and the ideal where you'll choose a quiet place under your house, an office with good light if possible. Uh, but if not, um, there are these like, uh, I put a, a um, picture there, it's from like a ring. Uh, that comes with, um, it's like a light ring and it comes with also like a tripod thing where you can hold your, your cell phone at the same time. So you have both. Um, and also, or you can actually film your video by, by window during the day. You don't have to do the light thing. There's a lot of tricks that you can do. And, um, and also the microphone is the most important thing, actually, I would say to start. Uh, if you're filming with your phone or your computer, there's very inexpensive uh, microphones that you can get in Amazon. Uh, but then that makes a huge difference. Um, I also like to buy a little camera for when I'm filming with my, with my uh, computer, just so the camera is a little more HD because I have an older computer. So you, and the camera also was like 30 bucks. I will say start inexpensive. Why you, why you start your videos, but don't like, but start. Cause you don't want to be, there's a lot. I think you have to think about in terms of the mindset again, you, it's like you have all these skills and this knowledge and you owe it to the world to put that out there. Think about all these people that are going through, let's say in this time, this pandemic, and the knowledge that you have, they need. So forget about how you look in camera. Forget about, get out of your head. This is an expression they use in acting. Get out of your head. It's not about you. It's about the people you need to help. So once you change the mindset, be like, forget it. It doesn't matter. I want to help you, this person who's watching me and needs me right now. Once you change that, and then do that with your phone and your camera. Now, if you actually then have years and then you want to improve and buy a camera, why not? Then you can do it, but start small, but you need to start. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I'm glad you said that because I think a lot of, uh, we need to start, whenever we start anything new like that, and it is daunting, we need to start yes. removing the barrier of entry to get started. Because mm -hmm. getting started is the most important bit instead of being perfect. And most phones, if you've got an Apple phone, you've got you know an Android phone, most phones are already pretty equipped with, with pretty good uh, cameras and sometimes excellent microphones, you know? Yes. Uh, and even using, uh, you know, just your headset sometimes is enough, you know, mm -hmm. just to get started. And I think it's so right that once you get to the, the, the practice and momentum that you've built mm -hmm. to be comfortable on video, do a lot more, you've proven that and committed that to yourself, then you can kind of upgrade yourself to different equipment if you need it, but very likely you may not need it for a while. So just start where you are. And the most important bit is that you're actually giving away your expertise and your gifts more often rather than getting stuck on, you know, being perfect before you start filming. Yes. It's about helping others and you it's kind of like you have these gifts that the universe god whatever you want to call it gave you so you need to share them and to forget about the cameras like on how you look so i always said that just change the mindset and you will it will make it so much easier you know when it's not about you and how you look but it's about the others who are watching you and what they need i find that for me and my clients that helps a lot um so how to ensure you get viewers? Because that's the other thing now. You put all these beautiful videos and you did all that. Finally, you got over the fear of the camera. You put videos and nobody watches. Well, um, the things that you need to make sure that you're doing is SEO optimization of your video titles and descriptions, um, search engine optimization. So you still need to use keywords on your title, your description. There are different techniques that you can use to be picked up by um, YouTube searcher. Now, for those who don't know, YouTube is part of Google, and then Google actually now is using uh, a lot of their, like if you type certain um, words on google.com, then there's going to be results from YouTube that are going to show up. You'll see they, they, they show a couple of ads, of course, and then they will show videos, the YouTube videos, and then they will show the website. So if you are someone who cares about SEO, which everybody should be, um, it's another strategy for you to be sure that you're in the search engine. So you need to be in YouTube, mostly a video for YouTube for that reason. Um, you, you can create video collaborations or interviews with other businesses that can promote your video. Sorry, video ads is the next one. Uh, video ads is also a good thing. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's also a good way to get you um, kind of exposed. But once again, you need to make sure that, um, that you know what your, uh, your, your true goal for your videos are. Um, um, now, there's one thing that I just I realized in the last couple of months, of course, actually ads are quite inexpensive right now for because of the pandemic and stuff. So we get to start taking advantage of that just for this time. Um, email, e email your list, let them know that about your videos. I think Lydia, you do that just quite a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, every video that we create, we share it with the community and then adding extra tidbits and extra insight to your insider community. I think people appreciate that. But yeah, the more views that you get, not just from, um, you know, cold leads out there in the YouTube channels or Google, but remember to actually be uh, sharing that with uh, the people that are already belonging to your community for sure. Yeah, and then you can share your videos on Facebook and LinkedIn. You can also upload them in LinkedIn if you want. Of course, the calls to action will be different. And also, there's another strategy you can use. You comment and you can comment on people's videos. You can go, for example, with someone like um, with a lot of videos, and then you can comment like someone in your field or does something similar to you, and then you can then comment there about you know some conversation that's going this is for you to specifically and then uh what if you contribute the people like what you're saying they'll be like oh who's this person and they will actually go and check out your your um your content or they will be like oh okay yeah or you can say hey i actually created something similar and i found this but very like not non push it because video is not for selling nobody wants to go to a youtube channel and sell well, watch you sell things. This is just not the world. Like, forget about selling. It's about giving content. This is content marketing a strategy. Um, uh, so, yeah. Any other? Do you have any other tips on this side that have worked for you? 
Um, I would probably put a caveat here that I think for, for people that are starting out with video um, is, as you mentioned in the beginning of, of the, the workshop, is that not to focus on these metrics of views right away. Like, I think it's great to have the foundations of, and, you know, Catalina will put her website and her links. She's got a great freebie uh, that allows you to kind of get started with video on YouTube. And I think uh, having these sort of grounded practices that you do over and over again and, and make sure that you're optimizing videos the right way um, that, that by default will in time start to gather that audience for you, right? Because you've started on mm -hmm. the right foot of tagging the right videos, great titles, right? Spent, and in the beginning, it might take you a while. It took me a while to deal with headlines and, you know, title of the videos and get all the checklist things kind of sorted. But most importantly, it's filming, right? Just film, even if you can't have the time to optimize your videos, that's fine. You can always go back and do those things later. What's going to be important is actually getting into the motion yes. of committing to filming, whether it's once a week or two five minute videos a week, like whatever it is that you can do. Um, I think the biggest practice is just showing up consistently first and then moving into optimizing what you have produced. Yeah, and then, uh, and also like, uh, because nowadays you, it's the constant struggle, you need to con generate content all the time, you know, do you, do you, you wanna be able to be in front of your audience and your potential clients. And video is a really good source for you to create a video. And then I think Lydia, you do this a lot. And I see other business owners doing that and then create a blog post about it. Then yes. you have a piece of content and then you can actually then share that blog post on other social media uh, kind of uh, avenues. But then always, like I always say, like the website is the closer. So going back to my point, and this is like the last point, um, videos is is more about brand awareness it's kind of like any social media you know like it's, it's going out there and it's kind of getting people for, to you getting people into your funnel but at the end of the day you always want people to go to your website because the one that closes the sale is the website so you don't want to sell on social media unless it's a video ad of course but you don't want to is like what you want to do is a, like you do for example lady is an excellent uh, kind of example for this you, you do so much content and then people come to your, your, your funnel and then that's where email sells, you know, when you sell or your website and that's when they see. So just remember that as well. Video is not about for you just standing, hey, buy my thing or make a video yeah. and expect people to buy things from that video. It's not that way. You want to make sure that it's actually contributing to that um, part. So mm -hmm. once again, expectations and make sure that, that that's how you're using a video. And uh, yeah. That's all I have for today. I mean, I know it's a lot to take in, in, in summary video. It's, it's, it's a good investment of your time at the beginning it might feel like a lot and, um, but it's worth it. Like Lydia say, and, and it's Lydia's experience, my experience and my client's experience is like, it gets so easy that actually now they even looking forward to make videos. I know even, I had a client, for example, she was a lot of a writer and she preferred that. But kudos to her because she actually put herself and challenged herself and now it's indeed and she's like, oh, I'd much rather do a video now. It's so easy. So um, anyways, you get there. It's just about, you know, like anything, practice. So yeah, there you Definitely. go. Definitely. Thank you so very much for sharing that. I'm just going to bring you back onto camera if you can yes. stop participant sharing there. Okay, there we go. Technology works. Uh, this was <laughs> such a valuable training to get started with video. And I'm so glad that you did it in a way that's simplified, uh, is not overcomplicated. And, uh, it, you know, these are the basics that I think mm -hmm. you need instead of, you know, researching algorithms and all the complicated things of, you know, video marketing, uh, just really focus on showing up for video, mm -hmm. just getting focused on the real meat of what people are watching, which is your content, your expertise, your know-how and your credibility that you're really building through video. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think video can absolutely be such a great tool, especially if, you know, uh, writing, like writing blogs is not my thing. And so when I can convey a message a lot more clearly and strongly when it's verbalized. So if you're someone that's that way, uh, I think it's an excellent way to do it. I mean, Catalina, uh, you're, you're an introvert as well right like where it doesn't it's not a particular specific type of personality type right that uh is uh meant for video people tend to i think believe that videos are made for intro, uh, extroverts you know and you're you're not an extrovert and i think mm -hmm. um you know what has been some of your uh what was like one key thing that's helped you to show up on video even as an introvert um for me it was more thinking about i'm helping people 
and more about this is what people need. I have this gift that I need to share with the world. I think I mentioned before, and I need, I need people to know it. I need to help people. It's always about creating impact on people's lives. And this is a way that I can do it. So that actually helped me as an introvert to, um, to get in front of the camera and, uh, and, and, and just do it. And if you see me, you say, oh my gosh, she, she, you know, she's a talkative and blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't, I'm not like this all the time. <laughs> so, so yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is for everybody. So I, and, and definitely thinking about the real purpose and, and your kind of, um, uh, your mission in this world, like always go back to it. And I think this is like, thank you all the work that we've done with you. Uh, um, really thinking about my purpose, my vision, my passion and connecting to me. Uh, going back to that actually helped me be like, okay, no, this is not about me. This is about my mission and what I need to put in the world. So anyways, yeah. Love that. That's Love that. What are you doing with me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Um, and if people are interested to get your support and uh, resources, I know you create really awesome resources for people. Uh, where the, can they find your work and connect with you? And also, are there any specific, um, you know, resources that you've created that, that can help people really jumpstart uh, their video marketing journey? So I have everything on my website, CatalinaRiba.com, and I probably will put the link. Uh, and also um, in my YouTube channel, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I have lots of uh, like nice content, but also lots of fun interviews for people to come and watch. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I find. That's my hub for everything. Those two things. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll put a link for uh, Catalina's website and any resources that she recommends. Uh, if you're, whether you're watching this on YouTube or watching this on our video blog, wherever you are, you'll be able to see that information. Uh, so thank you so much, Catalina, for being here. Uh, and we want to turn the lens on you right now. After you've watched this, uh, please comment below the video and let us know what is your biggest takeaway uh, and kind of motivating factor for you to start making videos for your business today. And what would you love to achieve? achieve with your videos when it comes to your business goals. So share with us below. And of course, don't forget to share this video with a friend that might benefit from this strongly too. Thank you so much, Catalina, for your awesome wisdom today. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. See you guys next week for uh, new episodes on the channel. Have a good day.